Okay, so let me go to some random place in the file here and introduce an error. And this is actually our live file, but I'm not too worried about it because Spy is very good at giving me an indication where my errors are. So I'm over here in this file, and all of a sudden I see a little red, um, a little red dot up there instead of a green dot. Something's wrong. Um, and I see this line right here, and this is telling me where it's wrong. So all I have to do is click on that. It takes me right back to the place where the problem is. I fix the problem, and notice that goes away, and now I have a green guy there. Sometimes you'll just see a whole slew of lines here. And oftentimes, all the whole slew of lines is all caused by one problem that's just cascaded. Um, okay, so let me go back to where we were so that I don't lose my notes here. Notice how I'm using the outline again to navigate. And I'm going to close up these. It's not about the course book system. It's not about infrastructure. It's down here and using the O2 environment. And it's going to be this one. Nope. Uh, working with instances. Under working with instances. Well formed. There we go. OK, so we've talked about the color coding. We've talked about the wavy lines. We've talked about the uh, we've talked about the margin error indicators, but we haven't talked about the validation button. So let me show you a couple of things about that. Um, it's actually the format and indent button. And let me change that. Um, okay, so um, first thing I want to show you, actually, what I want to show you is all about this button right here. This is the well-formed button, as far as we're concerned. So a couple of things that that does. First of all. Let me do this. I've gotten rid of all the indents. Now, I think you'll agree that that's a lot harder to read than it was before. Right? The indents really help us to figure out what's a child of what. Now, I click this little format and indent button, and boom, it all goes right back. And it, all, it puts in all of my indentations. Very nice thing to do. So you don't have to worry about doing all these indentations yourself. You click that button, and it indents everything for you. OK, so there's another reason to use that button. And that is to see if you uh, to see what all your errors are. So let me put an error in here. I'm going to delete that. Oh, and by the way, this is one that's really going to mess you up. Let's see. Let me just show you this one. Okay. Here we have a bunch of lines, and some of those lines are inside other lines. Uh, actually, in this case, they aren't. Let me go to place where they are. Okay. So see this line right here. See the scope of that line. The scope of that line includes other lines, doesn't it? So suppose for some reason that got messed up. Now, is the error here where, where, I, where I introduced the problem? No, the error is up here. And it says the line must be terminated by a matching end tag line. And I look here and I see, well, here's one and here's the terminator. And the problem is in here. And if this stretches over many, many lines, you don't really see the problem. And so that's one to watch out for when you have um, when you have lots of nesting. That the error may show up on a line where the error did not occur. So now not only is the not only is the error message not helpful to you, but also the wavy lines are pointing to a line that's nowhere near possibly where the actual error is. So all of this leads back leads me back to saying, keep your wits about you. Understand, don't don't depend entirely on on oxygen to tell you what the problems are and how to fix them. Depend on your knowledge of the um, of the, the schema or your knowledge of the of the instance to allow you to figure out what ought to be going on. And just you know, there's no substitute for just spending the time going through all of these different errors and beginning in your own mind to figure out what error words that the application gives you correspond to what actual errors in the application or in the in the um, in the coding or the tagging of your content. So let me introduce an error here. And I'm going to put an attribute that doesn't exist. So there's an attribute that doesn't exist. I get the little wavy line here. Um, and when I do this, um, oh, let me find one that actually breaks it. Hold on a second. So there, there's one that broke it. Now when I do this, I get an error message down here. So when I click this format and index button, it's introducing new pane down here that gives me all the error messages. And right now we only have one, but if we had a lot of them, this is a nice way of tracking all of those error messages. Um, one other thing that um, I'll introduce actually while, while we're sitting here is this little find thing. Um, you can see that it will immediately take you. This is a really nice way of doing find. I wish every application had 
the um, had the same way of doing find is really useful. Um, and so you can find the that you can find a string anywhere in the file, and as soon as you type that string, it automatically scrolls to the place where it's at. Okay, so back to this error pane here. Um, I can double click on the error; it'll take me to the place where it was. I look at this and I say, "Oh, okay, the problem was that." Now I'm back to well formed. I can save my file, and everything is good. All right, so that's um, that's what you need to know about how Oxygen helps you get to well formed and you'll be doing an exercise where you practice these skills.